The following program is presented to you by the Hope Channel Network. Welcome to Experience Hope. Have you ever had a habit in your life that seemed impossible to break? Maybe you've tried for years to overcome that particular habit, but you have found yourself powerless. One of the habits that many people have a difficulty breaking is the habit of smoking. Smoking is one of the most addictive habits and one of the hardest to break of any single habit in life. Many physicians feel that smoking is more difficult to give up than overeating. Or even for some people, smoking is more difficult to give up than alcohol. How do you overcome tobacco? How can you be victorious over the cigarette? And how can you take the principles that will help you be victorious over smoking and apply them to other areas of your life? Now, you may be thinking, I don't smoke. And you may not, but there may be a friend that you have that smokes, and you may be a Christian. And I'm going to give you some principles in the program today to help your friends who are struggling with the smoking habit overcome. And if you're smoking, and you've really been trying to overcome, but you can't, and you need principles, stay tuned. We're going to share with you some principles that will help you greatly. But these principles not only will help you overcome smoking, but they will help you in the battle with life. So you may be a Christian and not struggling with smoking at all, it may be for you overeating. These principles will help you. It may be for you lustful thoughts. These principles will help you. You may be struggling with an alcohol problem or a drug problem. Whatever that problem is, the principles that we're talking about today are going to be very helpful to you. The key in overcoming is to look from ourselves to him. And Charles sings about that in a song called He. A symphony He lights every star That makes our darkness bright He keeps watch all through Each long and lonely night He still finds the time to hear a child's first prayer, saint or sinner call, and always find him there. Oh, it makes him sad to see the way we live. He'll always say. make a dream come true he can paint the clouds and turn them gray to blue he alone knows where to find the rain see what lies beyond the bend. He can touch the 
tree and the turn of the leaves to go. Is there some habit in your life that shackles you, that you really struggle with, that has been difficult to overcome? I'm going to present principles in the program today, principles from the Bible that will help you to overcome habits in your life that you feel are very difficult. In fact, one of those habits is quitting smoking. Have you ever wondered, how can I quit smoking? If you're a smoker, you may have been really struggling with that issue, and you may have wondered about it. I've got good news for you. There are ways outlined in scripture, deep biblical principles that will help you to overcome not only smoking, but other habits in your life that you struggle with. One of the first principles is this. If you're struggling with some habit in your life, something that has gotten the victory over you for years, something that kind of has tied you up or made you feel like you were in prison, you will never overcome that unless you first acknowledge your weakness. Acknowledge the fact that you can't, but God can. Acknowledge the fact that it's impossible for you to overcome that weakness. You cannot do it, but God can. You know, the Bible gives us two contrasting texts. One is found in the book of John, and John chapter 15, and it really illustrates this principle of you can't, but God can. John 15 and verse 5. When I've helped people overcome habits in their life, habits that they've struggled with, there are two contrasting principles that I've pointed out to them. The first is John 15, verse 5, where Jesus says at the last part of the verse, without me, you can do nothing. How much can I do without him? Nothing. On my own and left to my own, I struggle. On my own, left to my own, I am powerless. So the Bible says, without me, you can do nothing. Now, the opposite side of that coin is in Philippians, where the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We're going to talk more about that later. But without him, you can do nothing. With him, you can do all things. There are many people that feel that I can do this. I know I can do it. And they grit their teeth, clench their fists, and say, I can overcome smoking. I can overcome alcohol. I can overcome obesity, over, overeating. Now, let me assure you, it's not hard to quit smoking. In fact, isn't that what Mark Twain said? He said, it's not hard to quit smoking. I've done it a thousand times. You see, it's not hard to refrain from an indulgent appetite. It's not hard to stay away from the chocolate eclairs or the ice cream when you know you're already overweight. It's not hard to do it for five seconds, but then you give in. It's not hard to quit smoking for five seconds or five minutes, but it is, can you stay off? It's not hard to refuse a drink for an hour, but then what about after that hour? It's not hard to control those lustful thoughts for a moment, but what about after that? How do you deal with those things in your life that you seem to be able to give up for a little while, but then they seem to shackle you and, get, and keep you down? First, you surrender fully to God. Unless I am willing to surrender that thing to God and make a conscious choice that I'm going to surrender it to Him, I will never be able to overcome the thing that I'm struggling with. So surrender it to God. 
Now, merely because you surrender once doesn't mean in any way that it's not necessary to surrender it a second time and a third time and a fourth time. A friend of mine tells me about his, told me about his father. His father had a terrible problem with chewing tobacco. He had to have his jaw filled with chewing tobacco. And Dad, he would tell me about Dad, and he'd say, you know, in the morning, Dad would be so disgusted, he'd spit the chewing tobacco on his hand, and he'd throw it way out in the field. And then it's in the afternoon, he'd see Dad walking around looking for the chewing tobacco he threw away in the morning. Now, here's my question. Do you think God let him find it? Do you think God hid it under a corn stalk? Or do you think God let him find that chewing tobacco that he threw away in the morning? I think God let him find it. Why? Because the same choice you have in the morning, you have in the afternoon. The same choice you have in the afternoon, you have in the evening. So surrender is not an act that we do once. It's an act followed by an attitude. It's an attitude that says, Lord, if there's anything in my life that's not in harmony with your will, I want to surrender that thing. You see, in the book of Corinthians, the Bible tells us that we are not our own. And today I'm talking specifically about physical habits, habits like alcohol, tobacco, habits like uh, sexual lusts that are out of control, habits that have to do with drug addiction and how do you overcome them? You take the specific thing, Lord, you know that my appetite is out of control. Lord, you know that I have a desire for smoking. Lord, you know that these sexual desires are out of control. So you take the physical thing that is out of control and you surrender that specific thing to God. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20, or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit that is in you, which you have of God, you're not your own, you're bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So the Bible says, glorify God in your body. In other words, my body is not my own. My body is a temple of God. A temple is not a fun house. My body is the place for the dwelling of the Holy Spirit. I was helping a lady overcome smoking once, and I said to her, imagine that every time you take a puff on the cigarette, and the smoke, you're inhaling that smoke, that the Holy Spirit is in your body saying, don't choke me, don't choke me. Now, I said that to her to give her a vivid illustration. A few days later, I visited her home and said, how are you doing? She said, you know, Mark, the other day I went to light up a cigarette. And as I was inhaling, just after I lit it up, as I was inhaling, and the smoke began to go into my body, I thought of the Holy Spirit coughing. And I took that cigarette, I crushed it out, and I said, I can't do this, because my body is the temple of God. Take that habit and surrender it to Jesus. And as you do, believe that Christ is giving you the victory. Now there's a difference between the victory and the craving. When you make a decision, for example, to give up cigarettes, the victory comes to you immediately by faith. The victory is yours by faith. You come to Christ, you surrender your life to him, and because of what he did on the cross, the victory is yours. Now, many people don't understand that, and they think that victory comes after they have no craving. They think victory comes after they maybe take a walk, drink water, after they deny, deny, deny. And we're going to talk about some physical things that you can do to get rid of the nicotine in your system, or some physical things you can do that will help you over any habit in your life. But... Until you come to the place in your life where you claim the victory by faith before you see the victory by sight. Faith is not sight, and sight is not faith. So for all physical temptations that we have, we surrender the thing to God, and then we claim by faith the victory that is ours through the death of Jesus Christ when he triumphed over Satan on the cross. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So victory over physical habits in our life comes by faith. Just a few weeks ago, I was in Australia, and a lady came to me, and she said, Pastor Mark, you're not going to believe this. But since you were here last time, in the spring, you haven't been here, she said, for, you know, a few months now. But since you were here last time, for the last three months, I haven't smoked and I haven't taken one drink. And she said, you know what has done it for me? You were preaching one night, and you said, the victory is yours in Christ. Claim the victory that's yours. And she said, Pastor Mark, I claim that victory that was mine in Christ. 
and I believe that through Jesus and because of Jesus that I could do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And I believe the victory was mine. Sure, I had some craving, but I believed the Word of God in spite of my physical cravings. And I haven't smoked or I haven't drank for three months. My husband is amazed. So surrender the thing to God and believe that the victory is yours by faith. Now, when you believe that the victory is yours by faith, that doesn't mean you're not going to have a craving. The craving is the result of the physiological depositing of the nicotine in your cell system. The craving is the result of years of a neuromuscular habit pattern. You've been reaching for the cigarette, you've been smoking it. I had a friend who quit smoking and was off smoking for a couple of years, and one day he wasn't looking where he was going real well. He was going to cross the street, stepped off the curb, and almost got hit by a car. He jumped back, and as he jumped back on the curb, he reached into his pocket for the cigarettes that were not there that he gave up two years before. So it's a, smoking is a neuromuscular habit pattern. It's something that you've been doing again and again and again, five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. So you may have a physical craving when you give up, but the victory is still yours by faith. You may want to reach for a cigarette, but the victory is still yours by faith. As long as you don't surrender, as long as you don't give in, the victory is yours by faith. So keep claiming that victory. Say to yourself, I've given my self to Jesus. I've given my body to him. My body is his temple. I fully surrender my tobacco to him and I claim the victory by faith. I claim the victory by faith. Now get rid of all of your tobacco. The victory is yours by faith but you want to get rid of your tobacco because you don't want to tempt the devil to tempt you. And so it's necessary for you to get rid of that tobacco. I was helping a young man quit smoking and we were going to pray about it and I, he acknowledged his weakness. He acknowledged the fact that Christ could deliver him. And as he did, he knelt down on the floor with me and I had him get all of his tobacco and I prayed that the Lord would give him victory and I thank God for that victory. And after we had prayed together, while we were still on our knees with our eyes still closed, I had put my hands over his tobacco and I said, get all your tobacco because you've got to get rid of it. You've got to destroy it. Just like the Ephesians destroyed the evil books. Just like the um, books had to be burned. So we've got to get rid of those habits that destroy us. And as I had my hands down on the floor, as he had brought his tobacco, while our eyes were still closed, I just picked up the cigarettes and put them in my pocket to take them out and destroy them. He opened his eyes and he kind of looked at the floor and the cigarettes were gone and he didn't say much to me but I could tell he was quite surprised. Later he called his mother who was a friend of my wife and mine and he said to his mother, you know mother, an angel worked a miracle. I, I brought my tobacco there, Pastor Philly told me to bring it, to get rid of it and we prayed and I opened my eyes and it disappeared. Mother, an angel must have been there. I didn't have the heart to tell him that I had picked it up and put it in my pocket. But I do think, in a real sense, that angels do, do come to give us strength. So submit your body to God. Surrender the specific habit to God, that alcohol, that tobacco, those drugs. Destroy them. Get rid of them. Like Joseph ran from Potiphar's wife and he said, I cannot do this great wickedness and sin against God. When she danced before him scantily clad and enticed him to commit adultery, he ran from the place. See, do not allow your physical inclinations, your physical drives to take over because you will lose. Now, once you have gotten rid of the physical habit, so you don't help a person be free from alcohol by having them gargle bourbon. You get rid of all that alcohol. Many a time I've been in a home, we've dumped out all the alcohol. We've gotten rid of it. Surrender it to God and get rid of it. Now, what about the cravings in our systems? How do we get rid of those, whether they're nicotine, alcohol, whatever it is? So here are some ways you can get the nicotine out of your system. To get the nicotine out of your system, the first thing you do is this. While you get a craving, you take slow, deep breaths. Now, let's practice it here. You want to get this nicotine out of your system. So what are you going to do? First, you can begin to take very deep breaths. <sighs> 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 
You're going to take deep breaths, and that will help you to relax, and it will help you to exhale, because we want to get the body relaxed so you can claim the victory that is yours in Christ. Now, the second thing that you do to get the nicotine out of your system is this. If you want the nicotine to get out of your system, I want you to drink between 10 and 12 glasses of water every day. You start early in the morning. When you get up, you drink two or three glasses. Then you eat a, a, some fruit for breakfast, but then about mid-morning, you pick up another two or three glasses. Lunch, right after, after lunch, not your meals, but after lunch, you pick up another couple of glasses. Now, your kidneys are going to think Christmas and New Year's came on the same day. That's okay. What you want to do is we're trying to flush as much nicotine out of your system as possible. So what are you doing? You're taking deep breaths, relaxing your body. You're flushing your body out. Now, if you have been pr having problems with alcohol, you've been problems with, uh, with drugs, this will help you. Take some deep breaths to relax. Begin to drink large amounts of water, at least 10 to 12 glasses a day. Thirdly, the next thing you do to get the nicotine out of your system is this. If you want to get the nicotine out of your system, you relax in a warm bath before going to bed, or you take a shower. Now, a warm bath or shower will be really helpful to you. Incidentally, it's a little difficult to smoke if the shower is coming upon you and you're taking a shower. Seriously, though, as you're exhaling, you're exhaling that nicotine. As you're drinking water, you're flushing the nicotine out through the kidneys. As you're in a warm bath, you're opening your pores, you're sweating a little bit. But I prefer really a shower as you're showering, warm shower, the pores are opening up. You want to use water to relax the body. You want to use water to help to flush the system from the nicotine. Fourthly, if you want to get nicotine out of the system, this is what you do. To get nicotine out of your system, you get eight hours of sleep every single night. Now you say, what does this have to do with it? What I'm trying to do is put you on a very good health program that will increase your possibilities of resolve to overcome nicotine. The longer you go without a smoke, the quicker the body is going to release you from that nicotine and the easier it's going to be from the standpoint of psychological will and the more you are on a good health program, the more you're relaxing, the more you're drinking water, the more you're breathing fresh air, the more you're taking a walk, the more you're taking showers, your entire body is going to be geared up to rid itself from that nicotine process. Now, there's another thing that I want you to do, and it's this. To get the nicotine out of your system, I want you to avoid coffee and alcohol. That's going to help you to reduce the craving. Coffee ends in I-N-E, caffeine, I-N-E. And it's an alkaloid. Nicotine ends in I-N-E. That's an alcohol, alkaloid. So you want to avoid drinking coffee. It's a good health practice anyway, but particularly when you're overcoming smoking. You want to avoid alcohol. Why? Well, a few drinks affect conscience, reason, and judgment, and then you don't care if you smoke or not. So let's repeat some of these things. What are they? Well, first, we're going to surrender fully to God that habit, recognizing our body as the temple of the Holy Spirit. Secondly, we're going to get rid of all the alcohol, the tobacco from our homes, anything that is going to tempt us. Thirdly, we're going to claim that victory is ours in Christ. It is ours. It's a present gift to claim. And then fourthly, we're going to begin to go through a process. We're going to take deep breaths to relax, to increase the oxygen to our brain to overcome. We're going to drink large amounts of water, eat large amounts of fruit. In addition to that, we try to go out and get some walks. We want to be particularly conscious of shower and bath to relax our bodies, trying to put ourselves on a fairly good health program that will reduce the potential of the possibility of smoking in the future and yielding to these habits. And then, as well, we want to try to get eight hours of sleep because when you don't sleep well, you don't have good ability to choose. And the Holy Spirit works through these uh, faculties that God has given to us. I was helping a lady smoke one, uh, quit smoking once, and uh, she said to me, you know what was most helpful to me? She said, Mark, you went through all of these physical things. What was most helpful to me was the fact that I wanted to set a positive image for my grandchild. And one day my grandchild jumped up on my lap 
And the grandchild said to me, Grandma, when I get older, I want to smoke just like you. I want to hold the cigarette just like you. And she said, that's it. I'm done. I'm done. I'm not going to lead my child in a parade of smokers because I may never get cancer, but my grandchild may. Think about what you might do to the future generation if you continue to indulge those habits in your body. Now, there's one last thing that I want to share with you, and it's this. If you want to quit smoking, it's going to be very, very important to be in a constant state of prayer. You see, the Bible says, Ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. God invites us to ask, to come to him and say, God, I know that victory is mine in Christ. The Bible says if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Remember, I was helping Carol to quit smoking. And I said to her, Carol, do you believe the Bible? Oh, yes, Pastor Mark, I believe the Bible. I said, read for me 1 John chapter 5. And so she took out her Bible and she read. And this is the confidence we have in him. I said, Carol, is the confidence in yourself? No, it's not. Is the confidence in your willpower? No, it's not. Is the confidence in your ability to overcome? No, it's not. This is the confidence we have in who? In him. Who's the him? Jesus. If we ask anything according to his will, Carol, is it according to God's will for you to quit smoking? Yes, it is. Then he hears us. And I said, do you believe you can quit? I'm not sure. You're not sure? We just read from the Bible. This is the confidence that we have in him. Your confidence, Carol, is in Jesus, not in yourself. She said, Pastor Mark, I believe that Jesus can help me. Carol, when will he help you? He'll help me right now as I surrender my tobacco to him. I said, praise him for the victory. Carol, praise God for the victory. And she said, I praise God for the victory. Friend of mine, you can be an overcomer. Surrender that habit to God and right now, praise God for the victory in Jesus. This program was brought to you by the Hope Channel Network. Thanks to the generous support of viewers like you. In the United States and Canada, call 1-888-4-HOPE-TV. That's 888-446-7388.